Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my video, and today I will be doing part 3 of my RoboCat build, which will be showing the install or not the installation, the uh, setup of the flight controller. And now, this kit originally comes with a CC3D board, uh, but mine actually came defective, so um, GearBest sent me a uh, NAS32, so I'm going to be showing you how to set up that in clean flight. And now I have, um, you know, I have this uh, top off here because I was working on something real quick. And also, you might notice the ESCs are definitely not the same as the stock ones. So let me zoom in so you can see this. Um, these are Hobby King Blue Series 20 amp ESCs um, because actually, the uh, I have been flying this. You might have seen my uh, well. You're gonna see actually. You're gonna see it pretty soon. Uh, my quick test video um, with the 12 amp ESCs that it came with, and right after that flight. Um, I actually had an ESC not catch fire, but uh, smoke and burn, so you can see here. And I'm not really sure if it was too much amp draw, because I was using these uh, FC model 5045 um, tri-blades. Um, so, and it, you're it comes with uh, stock 5030s, so definitely a lot more amp strong than that. But I think, because I had been flying with these for about a week, I think it was just sort of a malfunction and it just couldn't handle anymore. So I went ahead and upgraded to 20 amp ESCs, so now I shouldn't have any problems with that. What you're going to need um, for this step to configure the um, board is obviously you're going to need the uh, board on the quad with everything plugged in and then your receiver. You're going to need a battery here. I'm just going to be using a 1300 3S graphene pack. And you're going to be needing your transmitter bound up to that. And a computer loaded up with uh, clean flight, or you could also run um, base flight, but base flight is pretty old, and everyone uses clean flight now, and it's, that's how I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's uh, switch over to the computer, and I'll show you what to do then. Okay, here we are. As you can see, I have uh, my laptop loaded up here. You can see my mouse, hopefully. So I'm going to go down here to clean flight, as you can see down here. And I click on that, and now you have to download this off of, um, it's a Google Chrome app, but it's very easy and simple to install. So let's make that full screen there. And now I have, um, you're, to get this to work with your uh, NAS32 board or any other board, you're going to need to install, um, you can see down here, STM32 drivers. I um, mean, there's links, it's very easy, you just have to download them and install it. Um, to basically, it lets you um, recognize the board and configure it and have this set up. You pretty much just leave these stock. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the quad in here. And that's just using the micro USB to uh, USB cord. Right there. Now let's plug it in the other end. You can see this end to our computer. Oops. Right. Plug it in. And I have auto connect on. Once I can get it in here. There we go, and it should connect. Oh, I'm in the uh, plugged into the wrong USB port because that does matter. So let's plug it in. Okay, there we go. As you can see, I now have the um, clean flight all the way loaded up here. So now, basically, what you're going to do. In this first tab over here on Calibrate Accelerometer, you're going to make sure it's as level as possible. You're going to click that and let it do that. I've already done that. Um, next, you can skip over ports over here on the left. Go down to Configuration. Um, you want to leave it in a Quad X. And up here, you can see the diagram um, that shows you the way the motor should be spinning. Over here on the right, I am gonna I want motor stop on, which means when I arm it, it the motors do not spin up. I don't like that feature. Um, these ESCs aren't one-shot capable, so I leave that off, and then I have this one turned on. And these throttle settings are what I have set for my Tyrannus here. Um, pretty much you don't need to change anything else except um, if you're using um, one wire per the cable. As you can see uh, over here, I'm just using one wire. You're going to have to change over here on your thing to PPM. So make sure that's right, or SBUS, depending on what you're using. Uh, let's see, anything else? Nope, nothing else on this page. Make sure you come down to the bottom right here and hit Save and Reboot when you're done. Um, so fail safe, you can set that up as you want. I just have it to uh, cut throttle. As you can see, it says drop over here. I just want it to drop. PID tuning. This is where um, it's pretty uh, important, but not too much right now. So you can just, I'm going to use a multi wii rewrite. So if I hit uh, Save down here, I don't know why it was on Luxload. I thought I... 
changed it so now it's on multi v that's pretty much um i have my um rolling pitch rates to 0 0.45 my yaw to 0 0.22 and my tpa i set to 0 0.45 and 1500 um, but that's about it you don't really need to change these too much and it should fly pretty darn good i'm on a stock tune but this is where you come to tune it after you see how it's performing so the next tab is your receiver so you're going to go and make sure your receiver has power and you have to do that by plugging in your battery. You can see there, she should, should get our beeps from our ESCs, and now I'm going to turn my radio on. Welcome to Open TX. Throttle warning. And, uh, switch warning. Throttle down, which switch is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. And now you should see on the screen all these switches, um, the uh, little bars there just jumped. Now if I move my sticks, so you can see my pitch, my pitch there up and down. You can see that moving it on the screen there, and then you have your roll, and make sure these are moving it the right way. If not, you can reverse it either on the board itself or in your transmitter, so you can see that works. And then let's, our throttle, that works, and this is helpful to see your endpoints. You want to get them as close to uh, 1,500 and 2,000 and 1,000 as possible, and then our yaw. And later on, once you, I show you how to set up your switches, as you can see there, you, your switches will also... Um, move there. So it's a very helpful tab. Pretty cool. So let's go over to modes. This one's pretty important. Um, so you can see I already have these modes um, set up. Let me move that just a little bit so I can show you here. So basically um, for arm, as you can see up here, you have to hit add range. Then you want to put this on aux 1. And now I'm going to come down into my transmitter here. You can see now I have if I go over to my uh, mic in inputs, I just basically put a mode in a B. So all you do is you have to select your channel. Then you just put source, like SF. I'm using this switch up here, which is to for my arming. And then you just, go over your, um, you just go over to your mixer and then put the source as channel 5 and channel 6. So it's very easy to set those like that. And then basically since you have one that aux one, once you flip that switch, you should see this little green thing here. Hopefully you can see this. It jumps all the way over to the right. And so you want to, since I want my switch to be in this position here, forwards to be armed, I'm going to drag these sliders like I already have over so when it moves it's in that um, direction, in that range. And for next I'm going to go to, you have to go down to angle. This is your level um, stabilized flight mode. And you have to hit add range and change that to aux 2 as you can see there. Now if I flip my other switch, you can see that little green dot move again, hopefully. And so I want angle to be in my uppermost switch position, so I'm going to make the slider so it's right there. And if I move it again, you can see I had um, I added a range for horizon mode, which is in the middle. And if you hit it again, you can see it goes out of all the ranges. Um, the two are just floating around here. Um, and if it's not in horizon, if it's not in angle, that means it's in rate mode, which will give you full um, full manual control over your flight. And um, for the auxes, you have to make these both two, aux two, so they sync together like that. And that should be pretty much it for uh, that step. Um, I don't think uh, motors, next one's motors, pretty important. Um, so this for this one, you want to make sure, as you can see, I do not have anything on my motors, any props, do not have props on. It says it right down here, if you read this little box when you're doing it, don't have any props, remove them, and you have to click a little box right there saying OK. And this is the part where you definitely... Um, you do need your battery in there. Um, so now you can just test all your motors out. You can see if you spin the, uh, or if you move the slider up and down, it'll show you that there. And you can see the uh, graphing, some things on the graph. And this master moves them all up. And then also the, you can spin them up one by one to make sure they're all working correctly, as well as spinning the right direction. So that's very helpful. You can see there, and also this tab, you can calibrate your ESCs. Um, there's tons and tons of videos on that, so I'm not going to show that. Um, so next, um, let's see, I don't think uh, there's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Down to CLI, this is if you want to get more technical and change things um, more in a code form. But the nice thing about Clean Flight is it pretty much has buttons to do everything, and it, it saves it in code, but it, the user guided user interface, the GUI, is very nice and simple and as you can see this main screen your quad will move if you move it there so basically that's all you have to do really um, once you get your flight mode set up 
and your arming switch. So you can see if I arm it here, we should now be able to spin up my motors. And now using the other uh, 12 amp ESCs, I did have a little bit of problem um, getting them. They took a little bit more throttle and they all went spin up at once. So these are a little bit nicer ESCs. But once they were spun up and flying, they did just fine. Um, so that's pretty much it. And you, once you did, basically you're only going to need to come back in here to change a couple settings um, back in your PID tuning. Um, that's pretty much it. You're going to need to change if it shakes too much. You might need to lower the P a little bit. Um, but other than that, you can just uh, disconnect and uh, see if I can disconnect here. Just close out a clean flight. Unplug your USB. Unplug your battery. Take the cable out and show your transmitter off and you should be good to go. Put your quad back together however you have it and get your props on and go take it for a test flight. Um, so that was the end of the video. Please let me know if it helped you and you liked it. Um, hopefully um, it helped. And let me know if um, I can help you hopefully with some more settings on clean flight if you're having trouble. And you know, just let me know. So I'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe if you aren't already and I will see you in the next one. Bye.